It's time once again for... Mark Webb, Knowledge Investigator. Mr. Webb, you've got to help me. I just heard about a galaxy that's five billion light years away from Earth. I went out and looked at it, and I can't even see it. How can you tell how far away something like that is? I'm so confused. Ooh, that sounds like a tough one. I'll get right on it. Journey through all of human knowledge and see how it's all related as you follow the adventures of the man with the action-packed brain case, America's fabulous freelance knowledge investigator, your scientifically, Mark Webb. Galaxies are rather pretty. But my client seemed skeptical when scientists said they were billions of light years away. I wandered the streets for hours. How was I going to measure this distance? I went and I sat on a park bench. Then I wrote in a notebook. I mean, that's what detectives do, right? I went up to one of my favorite places to look at something that was very far away. And, wait a minute, could that be it? Could this be the breakthrough I was looking for? As I looked at my finger, first with one eye, then with the other, it seemed to shift position against the background. This was it. This was parallax. I remembered my high school trigonometry class and all those triangles. From how much the finger moved, I knew the angles my eyes formed with it. I could measure how far apart my eyes were, and the rest was a simple calculation. I could find out how far away the finger was by using geometry. This could work after all. If I looked at how much a nearby star moved as the Earth orbited the Sun, I could calculate the distance to it using the very same method. I discovered there were ways to measure even greater stellar distances. If I knew how bright a star was, I could calculate how far away it was by how dim it looked. Using parallax, I discovered that a certain type of variable star, the Cepheid, had a brightness proportional to how long it took to change. The more slowly they changed, the brighter they were. Now, I could find the distance to a Cepheid, even if it were too far away to show parallax. Could there be Cepheids in other galaxies? Yes, there were. That meant I could figure out how far away the galaxies were. The answer shocked me. They were millions of light years away. But these were only the closest ones. My client needed to measure billions of light years. That was thousands of times farther away and much too distant to see a Cepheid, or any other star for that matter. There had to be another way. Then, in a galaxy whose distance I knew, there was a Type 1a supernova, a star that completely destroyed itself and, for a time, put out more light than its host galaxy. Then, in another galaxy, there was another supernova, could it be? Their light output was exactly the same. I knew how bright they were, so I could calculate the distance to them. This was the breakthrough I'd been looking for. The supernovae were bright enough to see and measure, no matter where they happened throughout the whole universe. I called my client back, confident that I had the answer she wanted. Mr. Webb, I am surprised at you. I have to wait for a supernova to happen. These things don't happen every day, and I'm a busy woman. What am I paying you for anyway? 
it was clear that I had more work to do. Was I back to square one? Could I really only measure the distance to a galaxy if a supernova happened? I had only one card left to play, and so I played it. I did what I always do when I'm completely stumped. I went to the library. It turned out the Type 1A supernova allowed me to calibrate one other measuring technique, redshift. See, the more distant an object was, the redder the light from it seemed to be. Why was that? Well, you'll have to wait for another episode. But for now, my client could measure the distance to any galaxy that any telescope could see. End of investigation, end of report. Comments? Don't ever say you're bored and have nothing to do. There's an entire universe out there. Go measure something. <laughs>